In this video, I will run through the key characteristics of the problems you want to look for within your target niche that you can fix with your MicroSaaS solution. Fixing these problems for your users will make you very popular with them and they will happily pay for a subscription to your app. So this is part two of my 10 part playlist on building a profitable MicroSaaS. So if you haven't checked out part one on finding a great micro niche yet, the link is in the description below, go check it out. And in case you are new to this channel, then my name is Rick and I managed to quit my crappy corporate software developer job a few years back by building up some MicroSaaS apps, which I eventually sold and exited from for a decent cash payout. And now I'm passionate about helping other developers get started on their own MicroSaaS journeys, which is what I talk about here on this channel. So welcome. All right, so whilst we're only on part two of 10, I have written a book that goes into all the 10 steps in greater detail, which I can, well, more than I can go into detail in these videos. You can grab this book for free on my website. The link is in the description below if you want to go and have a look at that. Okay, let's dive into the details. So first up, don't create a solution that is looking for a problem. Whilst it's possible to create an app that improves people's lives, you'll have far more interest in your app if it is actually fixing a painful problem that your users are experiencing. So these problems need to be genuine problems that are in dire need of a solution rather than temporary irritations. So always start with the problem rather than the solution. And while whilst it's tempting to create something new that's just popped into your mind, it's likely that you'll fall head over heels in love with the idea and simply just have your blinkers on, uh, as we can see from this example here. You'll tell yourself it's a wonderful idea, maybe even the one, but in reality, when you start with a solution in mind rather than a problem in mind, it's likely you'll find it difficult to attract an audience seeing as nobody is searching for a fix for a non-existent problem. And that's one of the biggest issues that I see on products that launch on Product Hunt. Many of these apps are solutions in search of a problem and launch in search of a user base that may or may not exist mm -hmm. and they simply end up in the Product Hunt graveyard. So where do we find these problems? Well. The majority of MicroSaaS apps are created to overcome a problem that the founder is experiencing themselves. This was true in my case too. I created my first app when I was trying to upload designs using the old and very basic Merch by Amazon UI. At the time, you could only edit one product at a time and uh, there was no way to open another product in a new tab. And being constrained to one tab like this felt like a full on violation to my rights as a modern day user of the internet. So I was seeing this also being complained about on the merch forums and Facebook groups. So I identified a problem and within a weekend, I'd created my first Chrome extension, Merch Batch Editor. It's super uh, simple, super ugly, um, but it actually worked and users responded well to it. I set a one-off price of $12.99 for this app. Um, and even though it was a low price, I had low expectations. After all, I wasn't gonna run any ads to it, just rely on organic traffic, but much to my surprise, you know, to this next slide, I'll show you, uh, I actually generated over $3,000 from this, uh, which, all right, it's not life-changing amount of money, but it uh, allowed me to build up an email list and uh, good trust in the community as a uh, trustworthy app developer. And so when I was launching my next apps, uh, I was able to build upon this initial success. Okay, so the next place so you can look for sources of uh, problems or customers, friends, and families' problems. So it could be that in your freelance work or full-time job, you see a recurring problem for which there isn't a viable solution yet. So is there a way that you could create something that plugs in that gap? Um, alternatively, you could solve a problem for friends or family members, perhaps. And a great example of this in action is the Closet Tools Chrome extension created by Jordan O'Connor. This was initially created just to help his wife automate some of the tedious tasks on Poshmark. Starting off life is just a simple script, but uh, he ended up sharing that script with the community and received great feedback, so much so that he made it into a Chrome extension and the rest is history. So what started as a simple script to solve his wife's problem evolved into a great Microsoft product that fixed a common problem Poshmark sellers were experiencing, which in turn led him to scale his app to $32,000 in monthly revenue as a solo founder. Okay, real quick, uh, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're getting value from this so you don't miss out on the rest of the videos in this series. Without further ado, we'll get on to the next section, which is the problem should be evergreen. So 
Can you imagine people searching for possible solutions on Google or YouTube for this problem all year round? If not, then it's unlikely you'll have a steady stream of potential customers finding your app's website. The problem you're solving should be a long-term constant pain for your user base. You don't want to fix a problem that's seasonal or only going to be around for a short period of time. Although there is one exception to this rule, and that is where you're creating a quick app to fix a short-term problem so you can gain trust in the community and obtain leads for your longer-term app idea. And that is what happened with one of my earlier apps. I just showed you Merch Batch Editor. Uh, it fixed a short-term problem that was only around for 12 to 18 months but whilst it only took me a weekend to throw together it and well made me three thousand dollars as well more important than that it gave me 250 emails of highly targeted niche users prove they were happy to buy tools that help them fix their problems so during the launch of my next app in my target niche i was able to email all of those people with a discounted offer and kickstart my app's user base Next up, you're going to make sure that the solution is within your attainable skill set. So would the solution for the identified problem be something that you could build with your current skill set? And if not, you'll need to factor in how much time you need to allocate to training up in the required technologies before you can even start building your app. So building an app in the augmented reality space would be super cool, but if you're going to burn all your energy and time just getting to the start line, it's a non-starter. Also bear in mind that if you plan on using new technologies to create your first app, it's likely that your app is not going to follow those best practices for those technologies. After all, you'll likely be gluing together code from various tutorials, plugging in fixes from Stack Overflow just to get the thing up and running. So it'll take some time before you're capable of creating apps in these technologies using the best possible practices. Right then, here are the key takeaways from this video. Your Microsoft app idea must fix a problem. Don't build a solution looking for a problem. And you can fix your own problem or a customer's or friend's or family's problem. Just make sure the solution is within your attainable skill set. All right, so as you can see, it's crucial that you're not just building some software that you fancy building, and instead it really must revolve around fixing a painful problem that a niche group of users are experiencing and will likely still be experiencing for the foreseeable future. Right, don't forget you can grab my, a free copy of my Microsoft handbook, which goes into all 10 steps in much more detail on my website link below. And next up, uh, next time out, we're going to be talking about actually the exciting topic of generating great Microsoft ideas that solve these problems. Uh, that's it for now. If you're interested in any of these topics, then you know what to do. And I will see you around, see you in the next video. Cheers for now.